Can you just give me a level, please, John? One, two. John Shuttleworth. Hello? Testing. That's fine. Have you got the piano in your lounge? No, but I've got me, uh, me organ, uh, Patrick. Uh, Here it is. Yeah. Oof. That's... Uh, you haven't got a xylophone. <laughs> I thought you had it. I've got a vibraphone. Oh, well, this is a fair vibraphone, yeah. Um, number seven. Oh, no. Oh. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello. Have you been introduced to Patrick? Oh, hello, Patrick. Hello, nice to see you. Hmm? Nice of you to have me. No, you're welcome, love. Yep. Why are the curtains open, John? We're stargazing, Mary. Well, it's a bit late to be doing it now, love. Shut the neck curtains at least. All right, love. Thank you. Patrick, mm -hmm. can you move a bit closer to the microphone, please? If I talk round about that level, how do we go on that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. Really? You should only count up to two, Patrick. That's lovely. Right, gentlemen, we're just about ready for the handover from London. Mm. So stand by. Are you sure we're not already on air, Ken? My watch says 6.31. Look, I'm the producer. Trust me. All right. It's bang on 6.30. Yep. Uh, five, four, three, um, two, <sighs> one. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to say go, Ken. I'm <laughs> doing it with a hand signal, John. Oh, I see. Oh, I don't believe it. Right, it's 6.30, or thereabouts, and time for Radio Shuttleworth. Whether you drive a tractor, or you've just packed a job in that a factor, re or you're an actor, turn the telly down, or ideally off. And tune in to Radio Shuttleworth. Hey, I like the new words, John. Do you? This gone beautifully. Good. <laughs> Radio Shuttleworth. What's on the show, John? What's on the show? Tell us at once, we're dying to know. Well, Ken, on this week's show, a star always worthy of observation, Mr Patrick Moore. Also, saucy comedian Jenny Eclair will be attempting to make Mary merry. And the answer to Ken's brain teaser, which I know has kept many listeners awake these past few nights, myself included. Just some of the lovely things on offer in this week's edition of Radio Shuttleworth. Oh, I ran out of uh, tune there, Patrick. <laughs> but anyway, it's my very great pleasure to welcome to the show Patrick Moore. Thank you very much indeed. Nice to be here. Now, listen, Patrick. Yes? Um, since I knew you were coming on the show, yeah. I uh, got into uh, astronomy. Good. Uh, in a big way. Excellent. And I've been looking through me, me bay window. Yeah. Um, as you can see, we've got the curtains open. Yes. Now, listeners, so they can't see, but you can see, Patrick. I can indeed. Nice view. But if you don't mind, we're going to keep the uh, net curtains shut because my wife, Mary, is not happy oh, about yeah. them uh, being open at night time. Or the main curtains, for that matter. It's a bit like... Um, Having them closed in the daytime, there's a stigma attached. Do you know what I mm, mean? Yes, well, don't I live right on the sea coast myself, and I hear the sea and seagulls. Yeah. The seagulls don't mind a bit. I suppose they don't, but no. um, we've got some nosy neighbours. Ah. Uh, and uh, oh, I'm just going to dim the lights now. We've got, uh, yes, got that. Uh, a light dimmer from MFI. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's gone nice and dark now. That's better. Yeah. And uh, anyway, Patrick. Yes. There's something very exciting has been happening in the last few nights. What? I've been uh, looking out through the bay window. And um, at about bedtime, yes. I see this uh, incandescent red streak go ah, yes. flying across the sky, the yes. night sky. It's part of the sun. Oh, no, Patrick. No, it isn't. No. Um, and you should know better <laughs> than to say that, because it, obviously at night time the sun's not there. It may be a sunlight shining on the clouds. Uh, perhaps it could be that, but I don't think it is, because it, we're talking late at night, about 11 o'clock, 11.30. Ah, it isn't. What do you think it is? Well, I don't know, and this is why I brought you here, because uh, we must keep a vigil. I, I'd like your expert view on it, because, as I say, it's happened every night. This sudden this red streak goes across the sky, very brief, you know, and then it just seems to, like, fizzle out. And uh, I just... Some kind of artificial illumination, probably a, a, bright, a bright light on the ground of some kind, right. shining up in the sky. It can't be astronomical. No. It wouldn't act like that. Well, you know, that's your considered view at this stage. You don't know with respect to all the facts because you've not witnessed the phenomenon. Mm. But, Shall we see it tonight, do you think? Well, I hope so, well, Patrick. Keep the curtains open as far as you can. We'll try and see it there. Yeah, well, we will. And, um... Oh. Oh. After excuse me, Patrick. Certainly. Help yourself to nibbles, Thank Patrick. you very much indeed. Uh, Bombay mix. Thank you very much indeed. And, uh, keep your eyes peeled. Oh, dear. If you want to cry less and fill your life with mirth, 
Tune in your wireless to Radio Shadowworth. Oh, <clears throat> you're too strange, man. I'm a doorster. Who are you? What do you want? Oh, uh, are you John Shuttleworth? Yes, I am. Who are oh, you? Hello. Uh, I'm Sean Cullen. This is my uh, musician friend, Dylan. Hello. Oh, I see. Come on in. Impression, impressario. A chance to join Ken Stable. Impression, impressario. A deal is on the table. Impression, impressario. And I'll make you a star, you know. In Ken's applause, the world is yours. Incur his wrath. It's an early bath. Mm, it will be. Yeah. That's it, lads. Up onto the bar stools. And as Sean Cullen and his friend Dylan warm up in readiness to impress an impresario, it's a great pleasure to welcome the man himself, Ken Worthington. Mm, hello. Ken, before we hear Sean's first number, mm. let's have the answer to the brain teaser. Oh, yes. Last week, Ken. You told us of the lady who was born in March, mm -hmm. yet celebrates her birthday in September. Quite legitimately. Yes. So what's the answer to the riddle, Ken? Uh, because the listeners are dying to know. Well, I don't know, John. Do I? Eh? Hey? Uh, yeah, that's why I posed the conundrum. I was hoping one of the listeners would solve it for me. <sighs> you great idiot, Ken. Mm -hmm. oh, you don't muck about with a peak time audience like that. Mm -hmm. Now well, you better find out the answer in time for next week's show. All right, John. Or there'll be trouble. Oof. He lived by the sea, the dolphin boy, and he loved the dolphins that swam so free. The dolphin boy was at one with the ocean, the dolphins he loved with devotion, and he could not hide his emotion. Ah, the dolphin boy. So he abandoned the land up above The dolphin boy So he could be with the mammals he loved The dolphin boy He was fulfilled in heart and mind He was at one with all dolphin kind And he knew God's greater design Yes! The dolphin boy Then he was hit by a boat oh. The dolphin boy He was torn wide open from groin to throat oh. The dolphin boy He said to the dolphins Please help me The dolphin said simply ee, ee, ee. And they nibbled the pieces as they drifted free Goodbye to dolphin boy Sean Cullen there. Oh. Oh, you didn't like it, did you, Ken? I did. I loved it. Oh. Mm. Didn't mm. you find the lyric a bit, uh, what? sick? Not at all. Oh, I thought you would, after your reaction to uh, the rainbow and last week. No, you're being oversensitive, John. Oh. No, it's a parable. The dolphin boy gets his just desserts. He shouldn't have been out swimming on his own. Uh. And Sean sang it beautifully. He did. Wonderful command of vibrato. Yeah. I'm so glad that Sean came to see me. Well... You know, there's a lady who writes religious songs in Chapel St. Leonard's. Yes. I'd like to hear Sean attempt some of these Ooh. and then release them on a CD. Uh, limited edition, initially, just half a dozen. Yeah. So, just see how it goes, yeah, you know. that's right. But, oh, I'm very excited. Mm. Um, I'd like to see his Mr Bumble. Would you? I believe there's a touring production being mounted in Mansfield. Is there? I'll make a couple of calls directly after the show. What about poor Dylan? What's he going to do? Well, perhaps he could play um, a canteen assistant in the workhouse or something. Well, you know. the impresario is impressed. More from Sean Cullen a little bit later on. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yes. <coughs> Sean, nice one. Thank you. <coughs> Hello? Hello, John. It's Jenny Eclair here. I'm sorry to bother you at home, but I really want to make Mary Mary. Ah! Make Mary Mary, make her laugh. Prove alternative comedy is funny, not naff. It's like a holy grail to all comedians. 
Is it? Yeah, just to hear her chortle. Yeah, and it's not happened so far, Jenny. No, but, uh, you know, I'll do my best. Can you turn the tide? I'll try. Mary's going out to, tonight to Where's see... Where's she to? Well, she's going to see the Grumbleweeds in Drumfield. Oh, she's a fan, is she? Um, well, I think she is, aren't you? Um, I'm sure they're very professional. Indeed they are. They're very, very funny as well. And my point is this, Jenny. Yes. Um, Mary might need a little bit of uh, jollity. Just to get to, her in the mood. To get her in the mood. So, oh, mm. here she is. Right. Who is it? It's okay. uh, John. Jenny Clare. Hello, oh. Mary. Hang on. She's not, uh, I've still got the receiver, Jenny. Who was oh, that? sorry, John. You're jumping the gun. Who is it? Uh, I'm it's, keen. John. It's um, an alternative comedian again. Oh. Jenny Clare. She wants to make you marry. Go on, then. Oh, thanks, love. Right. Jenny Clare. You have a mere minute in which to make Mary merry. Oh, hi, Mary. I... Hang on. Starting from... <laughs> now! Mary. Mm. Mary, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm a bit fed up myself because I've been having a bit of domestic. I've mm. just had a big row with my nine-year-old. Oh. I don't know why I bother. Because these arguments, they always end up exactly the same, don't they? Mm. It's always, I hate you, I hate you, I'm mm. running away, I'm running away. You'll never see him again. And mm. then you'll be really, really sorry. Mind you, I only ever get as far as the pub. <laughs> um... See, what we've got going is a classic mm. mother-daughter relationship based on resentment and revenge. I'm just going through a great new phase with my mum, because for the first time in my life, I'm bigger than she is, and I like to remind her of this fact. Every time she comes down to my house, I measure her up against the kitchen wall. Last time I saw her, I said, if you live much longer, there's going to be pencil marks on that skirting board. Well, she got a bit upset, she did, she started to cry. So I did something I've been wanting to do for years. I spat on a hanky and I wiped her face, because mm. that's what she used to do to me. Mm. Oh, she never bothered with the hanky. She just used to gob on my face and wipe me down with her sleeve. Oh, charming. Um, cos, uh, she's not laughing, John. Can I go, love? Cos I need to iron my blouse. John, I've kind of given up the will. Johnny Eclair, your minute is up. Rubbish. John, it didn't work. No, not didn't, funny. no. Is there a smirk around her lip? Don't ask me to do that again, John. Oof. I heard some of that, because your voice is very strident. Yes, I was shouting a coming bit. Coming through the earpiece. Yeah. And you garbled your words. I'm a bit upset now. Well, don't be, Jenny, because, um, you know, alternative comedy isn't funny. <laughs> you know, and this item proves it. Well, I'm... Back just, to the drawing board with you. Well, I'm get, no, I'm just going to curl up in, in the corner and die of shame now. Well, there's no need to do that. Well, I might just go and have a little sob. Study the classics. Study the greats. <laughs> um... Tabby. I'll go and get myself a Grumbleweeds video yeah. study. Well, why don't you? They're, they're only um, one ninety nine. Anyway, you go back to your, your jotter's pad. I will. And uh, just think out some new gags. I'll try. Listen, you did very well, but you failed to make Mary merry. Thanks a lot, Jenny. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye, love. Serving the Sheffield region And a little bit further even Radio Shuttle Right, uh, <clears throat> back with Patrick Moore in the lounge. Patrick, you're not keeping a constant vigil. You turn the sofa around. Well, nothing seemed to be happening, so I thought I'd have a look at television. Mind you, it does look quite... Uh... Do you want to carry on watching it for a bit, then? Uh... Well, I don't think so. I don't think we should, Patrick. I think I'm going to see enough of it, really. It doesn't seem terribly inspiring to me. Well, no. Our inspiration's in the sky. Oh, yes. So, off for the tally. And, er... Uh... Just help me move the sofa back, will you, please, Patrick? Certainly. Oh, that's better. Ah. How did you get here, Patrick, if you don't mind me asking? Was it in your elderly Ford Prefect? No, it wasn't this time. Uh, um, the ordinary way I would drive myself. The trains are quite hopeless. I must say, I got driven up today, which was rather nice. Oof. Normally, I drive everywhere. I've got my Ford Prefect, but I go everywhere and a, a dear old Triumph 2000 that I love dearly. Really? Have you still got the Ford Prefect? Oh, I have indeed. And it's done over 600,000 miles, hasn't it? It has indeed. Not very quickly. Um, I was going up a steep hill a little while ago at top speed, and I was passed by a dog, but I have done it. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a terrier scuttled, scuttled past me. So you could have gone to the moon and back several times. Uh, yes, there and back. And I've done that, um, say, not very quickly, but after all, yeah. <laughs> yes, it could have been done. But you'd have had to wear a special apparatus, breathing apparatus, wouldn't you? I don't think my actual car would get me there. Not oh, really, no. Of course it would. Yeah, you've got to work out to all the escape velocity at seven miles per second, and 40 mph is my absolute limit. Yeah. Oh! Oh, sorry. I thought, thought I saw it. No, no. It, no, it was um, Ford uh, Scorpio going past at speed. No, you see that very bright star there? See the window? Can you see Oh, it? yes. Do you know what that is? What? That is the planet Jupiter. A world so big it could throw a thousand Earths inside it, and about 500 million miles away, quite close, really. That's Jupiter. Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? 
Right, John. I'm off. Hey, oh, Mary, before you go... What? Will you do a brief item with Patrick? Oh. Please, love. It'll only take you a minute. Go on, then. Lovely. I'll just play the jingle on my music centre. Plagued by dandruff or head lice, Mary's hairdressing advice. Tinted crimpy... Oh, that's nice. Mary's hairdressing advice. That's nice. Mm. Patrick, is it all right? would you mind uh, being part of this item? Because it's uh, like it. Mary's hairdressing tips. Right. And um, what can we do for Patrick, Mary? Because uh, <coughs> my concern uh, is that mm. with Patrick having slightly wispy hair, mm. he might be viewing something through a telescope when uh, suddenly a loose strand falls over the eyepiece, obscuring his view. It would be totally out of focus anyway. Would it? It certainly is. Mm. Oh, I suppose it would. For things of infinity. Yeah. Mm. But... Uh, I mean, it would be nice to have uh, lovely, smart, sleek, well-groomed hair, wouldn't it? And uh, I wouldn't know, but I'm sure you're right. Yeah. Mm. Well, Mary, can we give any advice to Patrick? Well, no. We don't want any, does he? <sighs> don't be so rude, Jan. <gasps> Where's my neck curtains gone? <gasps> Jan? Oh. Uh, I don't know, love. Oh. Patrick, did you remove them? No, Jan. It was me. Oh. Ken. I'm sorry, Mary, <sighs> but for Sean Cullen's second and final number... I wanted him dressed up like um, Bacchus, you know, the Greek god oh. of revelry. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all about food. And I thought mm. a long flowing robe of uh, diaphanous material just set it off nicely. Oh. And if it's all right, can he perform in the lounge? Because well, he needs to move about a bit. Can. This is highly irregular. Well, yeah. Yes, I know, but the kitchen's a bit small. Is that all right? Well, Ooh, they're here. Ooh. Sit down, Mary. You'll like this one. All right. Patrick, are you going to listen to Sean's song? Yes, I am. Oh, God. I'm going to ask you a special question, and I need your answer. Before the food of your choice will end your life tonight. Ooh. Yes, the food of your choice will end your life tonight. Ooh. Oh, dear. You, you there. Mm -hmm. What food would you choose to end your life tonight? Oh, um, a banana? A banana. Mm -hmm. A banana will end your life tonight. Jump. I will take a banana and I will replace the skin with a Teflon polymer that is completely frictionless. And then I will replace the banana fruit meat within the skin and I will sew it up with a microsurgeon's laser. Then when you open it, the banana will have no friction against it, the banana meat, and it will shoot out like a rocket into your throat and down blocking your airway and you will cry out but you cannot make a noise for the banana will be stopping your glottis. Oh, the misery and the agony and the food of your choice. We'll end your life tonight. Mm. You there. Yes, you. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Tell me, Ooh. what food will end your life tonight? Chicken tikka masala. Ooh. Chicken tikka masala. Ooh. We'll end your life tonight. <laughs> I will take chicken tikka masala and I will replace the chicken pieces with large chunks of Semtex, Ooh. plastic explosives, and then I will run tiny wires away from the Semtex, down infinitely small wires so they cannot be seen underneath the tablecloth, running away from your table. You will sit down and take a fork full of tikka masala. I will press the detonator and your head will blow apart. Oh. And the food of your oh. choice will end your life tonight. I don't think so. No. 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 Take a notice, Patrick. And finally you. Oh. Yes, you. Oh. you, John. I see you there. Oh. What food will end your life tonight? Um, a tuna bap. A mm. tuna bap? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Will end your life tonight. I will say, would you like a tuna bap? And you will say, oh yes, thank you very much, I would. And I will take you down in a diving bell 
to 50,000 meters below the ocean and say then, here's a bap, go get your tuna. You will step outside of the diving bell and the pressure will crush you down to the size of a small Easter egg and you will have a chance to scream because the air will be trapped within your lungs and you will die in agony. And the food of your choice will end your life tonight. Yes, the food of your choice will end your life tonight. Food of choice. No, leave me alone. Ken. Oh, dear. Right, I'm off to see the Grumbleweeds. See you later. Uh, yeah, bye, love. Yeah. Good night, Mary. Bye, Patrick. Lovely to meet you. I think you'd better go now, Sean. OK. I'm sure Ken will be in touch in due course. Thanks very much. Bye, John. Bye-bye, Sean. Goodbye, Patrick. Good night. He's a lunatic. No, I don't think so. He is, Patrick. He's completely mad. Oh, uh, that reminds me of an important phone call to make for the next item. Uh, you maintain the vigil, and I'll see you in a minute. John needs a job to earn an honest bob. It's time to annoy a prospective employer. Good afternoon, can I help you? Oh, yes, is that Mr Mad? Yes, basically. Yeah, hello. Um, well, I've seen your advert for uh, requiring mad people. To do oh, right. Mad things for mad money. No, that's right, yes. Can I just um, say, though, that I'm not um, mad? You know, I'm quite zany. You're quite zany? Yeah, because I dress up on Red Nose Day, oh, along right. with everybody okay, else. I was in a pageant recently for the Sea Cadets, uh -huh. and I was dressed up as a washerwoman. Yeah. And I had like a big bonnet on and was blowing bubbles. So you've got a sense of humour then? Yeah, I've got a sense of humour. Charlie good, Charlie good. I was like doing big scissor kicks in the air before <laughs> moving on, you know. Uh -huh. But I mean, how, how mad do you have to be? Uh, well, you don't have to be mad at all. It's just if you want to earn mad money doing mad things with mad machines. Right. Yeah, it's, I mean, the only thing that does worry me is that your advert is um, worded in such a way that you might attract, um, you know, genuinely mad people. And I'm just a bit concerned if I get there for the interview... Um, social workers might suddenly appear, you know, and pin me down or something, you know, and drag me off. I mean, can you guarantee that's not going to happen? <laughs> I mean, I know you called Mr Mad, but you're not mad really, are you? Yeah. Yeah? I'm totally insane. Really? Well, in that case, I don't think I'll bother. Thank you. And I suggest you get some therapy. OK, thanks very much for your call. Yeah, thank you. It's radio show with John, Mary and Ken. Sean, come back with those net curtains. Oh, Mary will kill me. Oh, it's all right, Ken's got them. Oh, he shouldn't be smoking, though. He's going to set them alight. Yeah, he's obviously very tense, as indeed we all are, after hearing that uh, mad song. I hope you weren't too distressed by it, listeners. At any rate, I suspect... Sean Cullen will not be invited to join Ken's stable. Anyway, he's from Canada. Ken's phone bill would have been astronomical. Oh, of course this means the uh, role of Mr Bumble is once more available. Um, perhaps Ken will now consider putting me forward for the part. Or, failing that, I'd be more than happy to play a canteen assistant in the workhouse. <gasps> there it is! Oh, you missed it. Listeners, oh, obviously you would, but... Uh, the red streak. It's just gone across the sky. Seems to be coming from Ken. That's funny. Patrick! Patrick, did you see it? I can now solve the mystery for you, because I've seen it myself. Simply merely a flicked up cigarette end, and Ken is entirely responsible. Oh, I've been duped. <laughs> it's no laughing matter, Patrick. Um, Ken shouldn't be flicking his tab ends into the road. No. No. Um, I'm going to have a word with him about that. Oh, well, at least we solved the mystery. We did, indeed. Though I can't help wishing it should have been a comet, because then it should have been uh, called Comet Shuttleworth. Because I saw it first, remember, Patrick? Did you hear a comet last year, Hale Bob? I did. I've written a song about it. Can I hear it? Well, I'd very much like you to perform on it, to end the show. I'll do my best. Um, 
Have you brought your xylophone? Unfortunately, no, it didn't warn me. Uh-huh. I brought my, my little xylophone quite easily, but in fact, I didn't do that. Well, this belongs to my grandniece, Michaela. Oh, yes. Uh, she got it for her birthday. Hmm. And um, it's all right. It's from, oh, well. it's from Toys R Us. Let's have a look. It's not bad. Oof. Brilliant. He's playing with a couple of biros, because we lost the stakes. Here we go, then, Patrick. Uh, Patrick, can you save it for the show, huh? Certainly. Yep. Thank you. That's all for this week. Uh, do join me next week when Vanessa Feltz will be my guest. Have you had a good time, Patrick? If you indeed. Good. Well, it's been lovely having you. I was on the M1, stuck in heavy traffic. I had enough of it and decided to get off it. Cruising down a country lane, the wind upon my bonnet. I saw a sign for Blatherwike, a name which invites comments. There is a place called Blatherwike, you might not have heard of it. But half a mile down to the right And I'd have come across it But I was lost and it was late I needed to step on it And the tail of the hail bop comet Was guiding me away from it Yes, the tail of the hail bop comet Was guiding me away Soon I was on the A1 Heading north for Newark Though my progress was hampered By roadworks at Stamford Home was getting closer And I was keen to view it Keen to, to view Blatherwike Well I had my chance and blew it But to be fair, I don't live there There was no reason to have done it And the tail of the hail bop comet Was guiding me away from it Yes, the tail of the hail bop comet Was guiding me away Solo Patrick The tail of the hail bop comet Was guiding me away from it Yes, the tail of the hail bop comet Was guiding me away Radio Shuttleworth was written and performed by Graham Fellows with additional material by Martin Willis. The programme was produced by Graham Fellows and Dawn Ellis. The series producer was Paul Schlesinger. 